are not doing their part in working to prevent what I call preventable foreclosures. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there's another statistic that is being followed today. Those statistics probably address or characterize most people in the room today. It is people who are current on their mortgages, current on their payments, they have high credit scores, but all of a sudden, their homes, because of other factors in the marketplace, are now worth less than what they owe on it. And lenders have the ability to correct that. They have the ability to correct that in financing and other types of things, and yet unnecessarily, many people are being forced to foreclosure because of the lack of assistance in this area. Realtors will tell you that the price discount can be due to the condition of the property, coupled with the seller's need to complete a transaction. Again, every market is different. Affordability is at an all-time high. There are good deals to be had in just about every market, and now could be the best time to buy a home in a generation. One would be very wise to look at opportunities available now while rates are low and incentives to buy are high. Myth, next myth, stimulus, me stimulus measures aren't helping real estate or the national economy. Such a debate over whether the stimulus bill passed earlier this year had any impact caused a few weeks ago for members of Congress to have a congressional hearing of which I was asked to testify on whether or not the stimulus measures are working. I'll share with you the same observation that I shared with our nation's top lawmakers. Not only is the $8,000 first time home buyer tax credit working, but we need to expand it for another year and extend it to all home buyers, not just first time home buyers. Cash for clunkers? Goodness. <laughs> Do you see the tremendous reception that had in the marketplace? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about $4,500, dollars 35 to $4,500 for a product that costs, on an average, $15,000 to $20,000 for most purchases, and they ran out of money in a week. We're asking twice that much, $8,000, for something that will purchase the most precious commodity that most of us will own, a home. What financial impact do you think that will have? I would hope that you would join our voices in talking to the members of Congress and the Senate from your state to ensure that when the time comes, they vote to extend that tax credit, not only through 2010, but to extend it to all buyers. They certainly do the, didn't do the cash flow clunkers to the first time buyers of a car, did they? So extending it to all home buyers will do a lot to absorb the current inventory of foreclosures and move the economy along a lot, a lot quicker. If just one in four households makes a purchase that's 216,000 additional buyers. Of course, if first-time home buyers are purchasing occupied property, the sellers may have been waiting for a buyer to come along, and they can purchase a subsequent property. You know, finding a home is just a part of the process as I'm moving down here. The private market is doing a fine job of making money available to qualified buyers, so we don't need any public involvement like FHA and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. As I alluded earlier, the federal government created FHA in 1934 to ensure mortgages made to borrowers who may not meet private market lending guidelines, and therefore 
made homes available to many, many millions of individuals who otherwise would not have qualified. Today, it's abundantly clear that for realtors and consumers we serve is that private lenders simply are not making money available to good credit borrowers. A July 11th article in the New York Times summed it up this way. The credit pendulum is stuck at stupid. <laughs> the article features several borrowers who should be able to get a loan, yet were turned down by various lending institutions. Excellent credit scores, high down payments, excellent resources, yet they were turned down. It even quotes a lender who said, my great grandfather was in this industry and I'm turning down loans every day that my grandfather in Punkah City, Oklahoma Savings and Loan in 1935 would have been happy to make. And he was tough on qualifying borrowers. If anything, the lack of available capital for good quality borrowers shows that there is still a valuable role for the federal government in mortgage financing. It is important that I share several principles that realtors believe are necessary to a successful mortgage market. And I do these as I move to close. One, capital must flow into the mortgage market in all market conditions. Two, qualified borrowers should have access to affordable mortgage rates. Three, Affordable housing goals should ensure that all qualified borrowers, including low and moderate income households, have an opportunity to realize the dream of home ownership. However, such goals must also promote sustainable home ownership, not just getting people in homes. Four, financial institutions should be required to pass on the advantage of lower borrowing costs and other costs of raising capital by making mortgages with lower rates and fees available to qualified borrowers. Five, confirming loan limits should be based on increases in median sales prices, including higher index limits for areas with high housing costs. Six, sound underwriting standards must be implemented and adhered to. And I've got just a couple more. Seven, Institutions must uphold the high standards of transparency and soundness with respect to disclosure and structuring of mortgage-related securities. Eight, there must be sufficient capital to support mortgage lending in all types of markets, of markets and the government must provide rigorous oversights. The last two points I want to make just as free speech, where it exists and where it doesn't exist, is coveted, so much of this generalizes to so many populations in the world. Texan Lyndon Johnson told the story of a West Texan farmer who once said, I've been to two county fairs in a hog calling and I find that people are pretty much the same the world over. He told this story to show how one of his colleagues in his argument uh, used his limited life experiences to extrapolate and confirm a larger body of knowledge and it successfully ridiculed this person so that Lyndon won his point. As ridiculous as it sounds, as I traveled this world on behalf of the National Association of Realtors, going to many countries, I find that the things that we hold dear, whether they have it or not, are steeped in the hearts and minds and cultures of people around the world. I went to Russia a couple of months ago, well actually in June, and while I was meeting with the leaders of the Russian Guild, we had a reception later and those folks who have been very much on time, they rushed in late. And the reason for rushing in late was for the first time they chose their president the American way. 